What's up, y'all? I got another banger, but once again, this one's a little bit different. Tonight, we got Simp Saver Sam in the house. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling good. Thanks for having me, man. Of course, man. It's good to see you here. Um, I know we're both in kind of the red pill space, the manosphere, the MGTOW. Um, so I know yep. you have an accent. I I've been wanting to ask you this, but like, where are you from? United Kingdom from Southampton. So it's like down south mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom. It's like an hour and a half out of London. Okay. So not many people know it, but as soon as I say London, everyone's like, oh, okay. He's everybody from knows, there, so. yeah, everybody knows London. Everyone, everyone knows London, so. So I know there's a huge soccer influence there. Like, what's your team? Do you have a certain team there that's like, this is our team? Do you know what? I'm not a football fan at all. Like, really? At all? At all. <laughs> like, I tried my best growing up. I was really bad at it. They stuck me in goal. I was crap in goal mm -hmm. as well, so. I was like, this isn't for me. Cause you know, when you're in school, you know, the boys do football. Yeah. The girls have their own sport. Mm -hmm. I wasn't any good at it, but Southampton has their own football team. It's quite big here. Okay. So a lot of people I know are really into it. But for me, it just wasn't my thing. I got into boxing pretty quick. That was like my go-to. Oh, okay. So that's something I um, talked about on the channel as well. Cause a lot of people were asking me about it, which were they were quite interested, which surprised me initially. Yeah, yeah. So Boxing's cool, crazy. man. I want to get into like um, kickboxing, boxing. Like, if you know boxing and jujitsu, you're gonna win a street fight, no doubt. Like, man, yeah, it's, it's it's such a superpower. So, yeah, you you weren't into football. That's kind of crazy. So, were you born and raised in Southampton, London area? Is that where where you're from, or did you move there? Or? So, I was actually born in Winchester which is about half an hour from Southampton. Is that from, um, sorry to cut you off, is that from the uh, Shaun of the Dead? Let's go to the Winchester, have a pint, and wait yeah, for this yeah, all yeah. blow up. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. I've, seen, I've seen some comments about that. But okay, okay. Yeah, so I was born there. Um, I was there till I was about 14. Okay. And then we moved to Southampton when my mother met my stepfather. Mm. So we moved here. It was kind of a big change because all my friends were there. Yeah. And I've got an identical twin brother as well. I saw that. So <laughs> That's really yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, do you know what? Some people have actually accused me of like swapping in videos. <laughs> it's like, I'm ill. They'll be like, <laughs> My brother oh, he's, got his, he's got his brother on. Like, <laughs> that is such a cheat code though. If you guys could like, yeah. if you guys have a lot of the same mannerisms, like, hey, I'm, I don't feel yeah. good today. Like, that's actually not yeah. a bad idea. <laughs> Let's talk about scaling. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how old were you when you moved to the Southampton area? About 14. 14, okay. Oh man, that's a tough yeah. age. Cause you, like you said, it you've is, had all yeah. your friends and then you move. How hard was it for you to transition moving and like making friends? It seems like you're pretty extroverted, so. Yeah, uh, it was, it was hard at the time, but it's definitely the best thing that happened. Like, I, it was like the worst day ever when we went, of course. we was in the car and leaving. And I was like looking out the window and I was like, oh man, you know, it just felt, it didn't feel good at all at the time, but yeah. I had my brother that that was, what was important to me as long as i was with him mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter where we go it's it's just hard when you're a kid you don't fully understand sort of you know you, you think your life is stuck to one place your little street with your group of friends and yeah you go to places you know so it was hard but like i say it was the best thing that happened in the end so right no so complaints. you're in because i know you guys do the grades a little bit different so 14 you're in like what seventh or eighth grade Something like that? I think I was eighth grade. Yeah, so 15 is sort of, you're sort of getting to the end of school, mm -hmm. sort of. Um, I think it's changed nowadays. It changes all the time. Yeah. But yeah, school, man, it was. It, I know the modern dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt physically. Have you ever been the victim of a personal injury case? Every year as an image consultant, I meet so many different types of clients, and a lot of them are recovering from injuries or accidents, ranging from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was extremely surprised to see how many people lost their personal injury cases, which is why I'm here to talk about Morgan & Morgan. America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they have won thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working with them, they will fight for the money you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan secured verdicts of $12 million in Florida and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is it's all free unless you win your case. If you have also been a victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi. Found in the description below where you can start your free claim today.
It Did you guys have to wear blur. like uniforms? Was it pretty strict with like dress code and stuff? Yeah, so you had to wear blazer, shirt, and tie. <laughs> tie had to be <laughs> tie had to be done up. You know, you'd get in trouble if it wasn't. But it, that that was the dress code. But the school wasn't actually like that great, to be honest. Really? You know, there was a lot of trouble in the school. Mm -hmm. But the the dress code was the only thing they sort of stuck by for some reason. Right. Like, I mean, Sorry. it's, they tried it at my school, it just didn't work. So you and your brother being really close, it's kind of given like Tate Brothers vibes. I was an only child, so I don't know what it's like to have like a brother I was really close to. I have a lot of half brothers that are way older than me. So like, what was it like? Cause I've only known one other person that has an identical brother. Like what was it like growing up with an identical brother? Like at that age, like it's interesting to me. It's, it's challenging and it's great. It's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. You know, like it's, you feel like you're living two lives. Mm. Like everything he does is detrimental to me and important to me. <laughs> yeah. We have our own language. Yeah. Like it's, it feels like you've been split in two mm -hmm. and one part goes and lives a life and another goes and lives another life. So it's like you sort of have to manage both because yeah. we're, we're super close. We see each other all the time. I was literally with him just before I sat down with you. So that's dope. We do a lot together, we do everything together. Right. Um, but growing up was, it was hard, but also it was a lot more relaxed because we didn't really need a lot of friends. Yeah, you had each other. You know, mm -hmm. we, we had each other, we did everything together, but it was hard to socialize with other people because I only know him mm -hmm. and he knows me like more than I know myself, so. right. When it came to making other friends and things like that, it was it was always a bit weird, and we're still like that now. Yeah, we still do everything together. We've got the same best mate as well. <laughs> That's cool. So it's just it's just us three. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah, we've got a lot of good stories. Like, you know, we used to swap classes in school. Nobody would know. Nobody would know. <laughs> he was actually he was actually smarter than me in school, so I used to go in his <laughs> class and mess it up for him because I was I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. <laughs> So, He'd be like, hey, go to calculus yeah. for me. I'll go to your yeah, English yeah. class. That's absolutely. Yeah. What about dating? Was it tough dating? Is it an idea, or was it a superpower? I could see how it could be a flex. Like girls would be might be into that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, both. You, you've hit the nail on the head with both things. But when there was a few times when you know I'll, I'll be seeing a girl and they'd see my brother in the street and they'd run up to him give him a hug and a kiss and him being him he'd just carry on with it and accept yeah, yeah, it with yeah. open arms you know <laughs> I can't be mad at it yeah yeah, yeah. he looked just like you but, yeah 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 I mean they were mortified crying calling me up afterwards yeah, but, yeah. you know it was just funny but yeah dating was um was an interesting one for sure yeah. but my brother was in he was in a 10-year relationship for a while damn yeah so I was single for a long time mm -hmm. I really struggled to uh find like a, a genuine relationship I don't, it's tough i know it's depending on where you're from and whatnot but yeah the uk isn't really known for its uh its, its dating standards yeah, yeah you know there's a lot of crazy stuff going on same thing here dude is it is it kind of like like the modern because i know we we kind of react to the same kind of content is it like the modern women like i don't need no man what do you bring to the table is it kind of like that there as well it's that here. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't I don't mean any disrespect to America and those places. I think it's a bit worse over there. Mm. But it's definitely transitioning to the UK yeah. like more and more. I think the main UK problem is the provocative clothing yeah, yeah, yeah. and the the clubbing lifestyle is a big thing here. Like almost mm. every girl you meet will be going to the club every weekend and you know, they say it's fine to do that even when they're in a relationship. That's a big thing. That's why it's so hard. Yeah. But absolutely not. Yeah. Like, cause I'm, I'm in a relationship. I've been in a relationship for seven years. Love my girl. She's cleaning the house right now. We got friends coming over later on. Like, but see, Texas yeah. is a lot different than other parts of the state. Like you go to Austin, it's the blue haired hippie, armpit hair, bull nose <laughs> ring. You know what I mean? It's all that. And the girl's like, I want to yeah. be poly. I want to be in an open relationship. I want to go yeah, to the club. Yeah. And like, when you find the smaller pockets of smaller towns, like girls are much more traditional. So like, are you in a relationship now or are you single? Yeah, so I've been in a relationship for six years. We're engaged. Congrats, Pretty, brother, um, congrats. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Um, she's awesome, man. Like, 
I, I speak about her on the channel. Like people even comment about her. Obviously, I've never shown her on camera. But yeah, me either. <laughs> she, she's great, man. I'm not really one of those guys who advocates like, oh, you need to go and be with all these people and have five girls on your roster every week. Like, you know, yeah, it's great if you do it, but that's not like, that's not something I advocate long term. Yeah. You know, so, but yeah, she's great. We met in the boxing gym, funny enough. That's cool. So when I left Winchester, I was boxing at Winchester Boxing Club for a while. And then when I came to Southampton, carried on boxing for about five years. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized I don't want to get punched in the face anymore, <laughs> I uh, got into coaching instead. Yeah, less and that's damage. Where, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's where we met. She was working on the desk at the gym and then we just, yeah, just we just clicked. So and was it, I'm assuming you approached it. her casual conversation, like was there a certain thing, like was it a pickup line or was it just like proximity, like you see her a lot, you say what's up? Do you know what, I, don't, I think the only thing I'm blessed with, like even when I was young, I never put girls on a pedal stool. <sighs> yeah, you like, can't do that. Like there seems to be that thing of like a guy will go and approach a girl and they got to think about what to say, think about what to do. Yeah. Just go and speak to her. She's no different from you. Like yeah, the facts. worst that's going to happen is she's going to say no. Yeah, that's the worst so, thing. Yeah. So we just clicked really and where we were in the work environment, it wasn't really like, oh, I'm going to go and hit on her. It just sort of, we worked together and we really got on and it just, it just happened. Like went from there really like. Sounds like it yeah, was pretty it was... organic, wasn't forced. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way to do yeah. it. That's what I. That's the advice I give. Like, keep everything situational. There's no pickup line. There's no golden ticket to get in a girl's pants. Like, even to get a girl's attention, you just have to, you know, approach them and it's just make it situational. Whatever you're talking about. So you guys yeah. have been together for six years. Did you ask her out in a certain way, or was it like, hey, I want you to be my girl, or was it just kind of assumed? Well, we were dating for about six months i would say mm -hmm. um but there's not really there wasn't really a big difference from when we were dating to be in, in a relationship yeah you know it's I mean, usually not just a smooth transition most of the time <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly so i was literally just about to get on a plane i was going to go to greece on holiday with my family so mm. my brother was sat with me and he was like, oh why don't you why don't you go and ask her tonight and then you'll go on a plane tomorrow and then you know it will be like that mystery yeah, and yeah. everything and i'm like I don't know, maybe I should do it when I get back, but I didn't. My brother drove me there, so I wasn't driving at the time. Mm -hmm. And I asked her like the day before, but like you say, nothing really changed and we're still the exact same now. Like, right. she's literally golden. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a lucky man, I'm a lucky man. Dude, I'm there there are still women out there, there's still hope, and that's what I preach. So what were some of the things you were looking for in a girl to date? since the, the dating market's so bad right now, were there certain things that you're like, these are the things I'm looking for, and if she doesn't have that, I'm not gonna entertain it? Mm. Definitely the provocativeness. Yeah. Whether that be how they act, speak, I think I all put it, I put all of that into one category. Yeah. Um, and how joyful they are, how happy they are. That's a big thing for me, because mm. I'm a big believer on the woman is, is the one who sets the mood of the house. Yeah, facts. You know, if you're, if you, it don't matter how good your day is. Yeah. If you come home and your missus is upset, she's sad, she's angry, it really, it changes the whole energy of the house. Like, it does. So for me, whenever I come home, I could be having a bad day. You know, she's always happy, joyful, makes me laugh. Like she's doing everything she has to do and I just can't, you know, she she really is part of the foundation for everything I've done. Like, I wouldn't be where I am now about it, one hundred percent. Dude, I say the same thing. Getting a good woman allows a man to focus because before yeah. that I was chasing tail, and when you chase tail, yeah. you're always looking for the next best thing. But when you can actually get a good woman and like hunker down on what you're good at, like I never would have started my Instagram being taken that serious. I never would have started YouTube and taken that serious. So let's transition yeah. to that. When did you start doing these types of YouTube videos? Cause dude, you you get tons of engagement. You got like almost a hundred thousand subscribers. Like when did you start doing all this? Uh, it's a tricky one because people have asked me before and I had like this uh, funny nickname. It wasn't really a nickname, but <laughs> before YouTube, everyone used to call me the relationship destroyer. So, <laughs> destroyer? Like, the relationship destroyer. So yeah. I used to just 
call out BS. Like, I, I worked yeah. in a security firm with a lot of guys, mm. and um, I got some. I still have some good friends who work there, and you know, we'd we'd be working till like one o'clock in the morning all the time. And when you spend most of your life with your work colleagues, which that's how life is, unfortunately, yeah, you, you get to know their families, their their partners, you know, their life. Yeah, and. You know, they used to get so much nag from their girlfriends. I'll just be sat there and I'll be like, man, what, why are you dealing with that? Like, you know, how do you deal with that? And I'll just be calling stuff out. And then before you know it, I'm getting like these people's girlfriends messaging me on Facebook saying, leave us alone. You're destroying my life. And I'm like, hang on a minute. I'm just telling him to. <laughs> it ain't nothing to do with me. It's got everything to yeah. do with your man. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. That's okay, funny, dude. Broke. But, um. um I actually got death threats from one of my friends. Uh, Girls? Girlfriends at the time. Yeah, man. She, <laughs> she, she put in the group chat, if you ever see Sam, run him over. It's on site. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause she, she said I destroyed his relationship because I was telling him to stop drinking all the time, you know, go to the gym. You know, I taught him boxing at work. I used to bring my pads in and do yeah. some boxing with him to try and help him out. And I was with him at his house and his missus threw a microwave at him from the top of the stairs and I could have he's alright now though yeah. yeah he's alright now but that's one of many examples like so so after all those things like people say to me like oh why don't you why don't you make like a dating channel and I'm like no I don't really want to make a dating channel it's not really my sort of thing yeah and I didn't come out of school with a lot been punched in the head way too many times <laughs> and um the nine to five sort of lifestyle wasn't wasn't cutting it for me. I never yeah, really Yeah, facts, brother. I was never really happy, man. I just thought, I can't do this. Like I had a, a good job. I had a good job, everything was fine. But What did you do? You did security for a bit, then what yeah, else did yeah, you do? Yeah, I was in the I was in the security firm for five years. Before then I was coaching. Oh yeah, that's right, and coaching. Well I bet being a boxer helps in security. Oh for sure, for you know, sure. Beat somebody up. Everyone saying, "Oh, you should make it, make a YouTube channel. You make a YouTube channel." And I was like, "No, I don't really." And then when I was at home one day, I just decided, right, I'm just going to make a few videos, see how I get on with it. Yeah. And then I just, I sort of, I did enjoy it. I never really cared about views. I still don't really care about views that much, to be honest. Yeah. But started doing it, started enjoying it, and people were enjoying it as well, mm -hmm. which I found hard to believe at the time. Yeah, it is hard to and believe. Because you're like, I'm me. You know all your insecurities. Yeah. You know all the things. You're like, why are people watching what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel yeah, that. Totally. Okay, so you, when, when did you start the channel, though? Was it like a year ago, two years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. Two okay, years okay. Ago. So yeah. people are telling you to start the channel. You finally start the channel. Sorry, I didn't mean to kill your momentum. I just wanted That's a okay. timeline there. Yeah. It was mainly like, I, I mainly, I, I wouldn't even call myself like a, a red pill creator. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just more common sense. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, common sense it. now. Being normal is controversial now. That's what. That like, is it. Yeah. Like, I, I said to people, I'm going to make a channel, and it's just going to be common sense, because I didn't realize how rare that that is. It like is very I say, rare. A lot of people's girlfriends hated me. Mm -hmm. That was a known thing. Like I was a curse to other people's relationships, because I should. I, I just. I'm a very, just simple guy yeah minimalistic person mm -hmm. you know i do it pretty much everything off common sense and that's so what we are we're logical guys that's just most men are very logical you know and yeah. i'm the same way but see what we do is considered red pill like i want a woman yeah. to be a stay-at-home wife i want her to cook and clean they're like how dare you oppress her my girl is not oppressed she's living her best life she I likes know. being at home and doing her thing promise you yeah yeah so like yeah, I mean, same as you. I've got all the labels before. Yeah. And I, if anything, I am pro woman, pro man. Oh yeah. Everything. I'm like, pro relationships, and see, guys like us yeah. are pretty rare. A lot of the guys in this space don't want you to be in a relationship. They want you to be alone, and and I think we're better together. And together we're for better. Sure. So that's my whole thing. So. One hundred percent. You start doing it for two years. Did you start with just the reaction stuff, or was it just like, like a, just a face cam of you just giving advice? Like, what was? Was it originally like a reaction channel or what? It, yeah, I, I guess I guess it is a reaction channel, and that's okay. pretty much what I was doing. And obviously, I admired people like Arico, you know, yeah, yeah. Griffin Mind, you know, these guys. Mm -hmm. And it just, I just started doing them, and then 
the, the comments was a big thing for me and even now like people can go to like some of the most popular videos you'll see that I've replied and liked the most comments because it's a big that's a big part of it to me like reading comments keeps me going yeah and you know one comment can motivate me to make another five videos yeah facts you know just because of one person mm -hmm. you know and that was a big deal for me and it gave me a goal like I was going to work I had no money when I met my fiance I had no money she had no money and I was like I'm gonna make this work and she was on she was on the you know she was on it with me she said we're gonna make this work I'll do whatever you need me to do to help you support you that's dope and two two years later this is my this is my life now so yeah, yeah. well do you do house. this full time right you don't do anything else no this is my full-time job now good so, for you brother good for you i recently yeah. <clears throat> i recently took the leap and i'm doing this full-time now um yeah, I just man, wanted... you're killing it on youtube man obviously i've watched your stuff for a while mm -hmm. like i mean look at your setup compared to mine <laughs> well i've been here for a while dude i've been here a while no no look at you in the in the blazer like look at me and then look at my <laughs> setup <laughs> You'll get it there. You'll get it there. But one one yeah. thing I've I've realized that it's like it's really not about the setup, what it looks like, what you wear. I just do this because it it like makes me a character, and so people know I wear the the crushed velvet like turtleneck and the blazer, and then like it just creates a brand. And so now when people see me, and the other thing I liked was that nobody can tell when it was. The only thing you can see is like I have a different haircut. My haircut's a little bit shorter sometimes, but like you yeah. never know a timeline of when I was making content, so it always looks like me. I wanted to characterize myself, so people are like, hey, this is the Levi character. Um, right. So how would you come up with the name Simp Safer Sam? Like that's a great name. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's kind of linked to what I was saying earlier about like the relationship destroyer. You know, people used to oh, say yeah, I was yeah. a, bird, a, a curse. So, like people used to say, oh, you know, Simp Saver Sam. He's he's saving all these these guys. And mm -hmm. my brother actually came up with the name. Like a few people had said it here and there. Yeah. And then my brother was <laughs> like, funny. Oh, you, sh you should use it as your name. And I was like, no, it's a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> but because I didn't take YouTube that serious, like yeah. when I first started the channel, I, I just wanted something funny because I'm not I'm not the most serious person. Oh yeah, me either. Like, you know, so I just thought of a funny name and, and it just stuck. Really, it's a great so, name. I love alliteration, and that's what your name is, Simp Saver Sam. And yeah. then like your logo, everything, it looks really good. So when yeah. did you start like? When did you start taking YouTube pretty serious and say, was it from the beginning of the two years or like, because I know you said your girl was supportive, which is dope. Most of the time you don't get that. But like, what month mark did it hit where you were like, oh, damn, there's like some serious potential here. Like I should double down on this. Were you working, I guess, in the beginning still? Yeah. So yeah. I was working two jobs and I didn't have, like I said, I didn't have any money because um, I was self-employed, right. really struggling financially, I'm still living at home. I didn't have a car, um, so I was commuting to get to work, train and bus every day, coming Damn. home, doing a video. I used to do half my videos at work, you know, whilst working like t in toilet breaks and whatnot, like right. trying to find content and thumbnails and everything. But yeah. I was like, one day it's gonna, it's gonna pay it's off. It's gonna pay off. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna pay off. And because I was so busy, I was uh, uploading once every two days. And I remember when. So that whole time, it was probably about a year, maybe, maybe a bit less than a year, but mm -hmm. the views were sort of always the same, like pretty low views. Um, like a few hundred, a few thousand, what's low for you? Yeah, so at the time, it was probably under a thousand views, Yeah. a I'm... video for six months. And yep, been there. Yeah, man. And, and then it went to like two and a half to five for like, another six months and then i remember when we had moved out we'd gone to our flat and we were living there and it was super stressful that that time of my life and i remember coming home and i sat on the sofa opened up youtube studio yeah and i did a delusional uh woke people getting owned part oh, one. Yeah, 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 yeah part one and i remember looking at it and it was on it was on like forty thousand views in three hours and for me that was a big <sighs> that's huge i was like I was, I was like, I called, called most, I was like, come look, look, look at this video I was like showing on my phone. Yeah, yeah. And it sort of, I sort of capitalized on the, you know, the, the growth I got from that video and I kept it going, kept it going, kept it going, kept the ball rolling. That was at around 9,000 subs, I would mm -hmm. say. And then it got to 10,000 and I was like, oh, okay. Then got to 20,000, like two weeks later. 
and then got to 30,000 another few weeks later. And I was mm. like, what is happening? Yeah, it's insane. Like, I literally uploaded every other day, sometimes every day, when I could for a year. Mm -hmm. And then in the space of three months, I literally, you know, it just went crazy. It like just tripled your channel. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, like some videos, a few got over a million views. And like I say now, I'm almost at 100,000. Mm -hmm. And from 10 to, to now, it's just been a blur. It's honestly. a massive jump, dude. Well, and it's crazy. Yeah. It, the same thing happened to me like two months ago. I had two months in a row that I gained like 20,000 subs. I was like, this is insanity. Because I posted yeah. for like six months straight and had the same thing. Yeah. Nobody was watching. I was stuck at like, I had like 5K subs from years ago. Yeah, um, but your channel, like, sorry to cut you off, but your channel looks like so much better than what, you know, you, you've got 77,000 subs, right? Yeah. Yeah, like your channel looks like those channels that have like half a million a million subs like Thank your you. quality everything is great like we i've watched your videos in the past anyway mm -hmm. but yeah man like your, your channel's killing it as well so you'll you'll be at 100k before you know it as well I, sure. I hope so man and i really do appreciate that i put a lot of work into it like a lot of work yeah. like this whole yeah. backdrop i put all together and then but I don't know about you, but like, here, we'll get into this in a second because I got this LED sign from a company, but. Yeah, that looks clean. Um, so let's go back. You were talking about, you made content for like six, seven months. This is what I tell my guys that like, a lot of people hit me up, Levi, I want to get started. This is like, like take this testament from Sam right now. He posted for six months straight every other day or even a year straight. Like, dude, it takes so much time. So yeah. now with your posting schedule, are you doing every day? Or are you still doing every other day? Like what's the frequency of what you're posting now? Um, I think I, I wouldn't say I'm like a super perfectionist, Yeah. but I, I don't really have a schedule. Like I always think I'll do a video when I want to do one. Yeah. So. I, I like to get one out every day, but if I don't feel like it a certain day or I feel like I've done enough, mm -hmm. I won't do it. Right. If I'm not in the right frame of mind, I don't want to put out a, a bad video. Yeah, I feel you. you know? I feel you on that. So I try to upload every day and that's normally okay for me, especially now where I don't have to worry about going to work and, yeah. and things like that. It's a lot easier. That's it's way still, easier. <laughs> yeah, like people say, oh, you... you you're, uh, I'd love to meet you and have a picture with you and you're, uh, you know, you work so hard and your life must be so difficult. And I'm like, look, the people who tell me that, I said, you, you the one who deserves the credit, not me. Yeah. I don't go to work. I don't have to work two jobs and yeah, take seriously. care of kids. Like those people are the real heroes, mm -hmm. not me. I have an easy life now. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, people, don't get me yeah. wrong. It wasn't before that, but people try and put people on social media on a pedestal. I'm not that sort of person. I yeah. drive a 2004 Toyota Prius. It's <laughs> a good vehicle you know, though. Priuses are good it's vehicles. It's a great though. car. Yeah. You know, people are, you know, it's not, it's not a, a hard life for me now. Like no. it was before, mm -hmm. but you, it seems to be a big thing on social media, like Twitch streamers, YouTubers, everyone's like, ah, oh, these people must be, you know, getting up at 5 a.m. and doing 12 hours a day. They ain't. No, no. It's Being a content creator nine, is the nine, easiest thing. It is, man. A, a nine to five is the real struggle. Yeah, oh, 100%. Nine to five. Brick they layers. The credit. Yeah, concrete guys, dudes that are outside, yeah. like, busting up. Yeah, that's that's way more difficult. Don't get um, me wrong. Creating YouTube videos is, is difficult in its own way. Yeah. But it's nothing compared to working two jobs and working 12 hours a day no. for, for minimal amounts of money. Mm -mm. It's crazy, man. So... For the transition for you of being, you know, a nine to five guy and then going and being an entrepreneur, do you, do you ever, because I consider YouTubers entrepreneurs, like nobody's telling you to wake up, nobody's telling you to record, nobody's, you know what I mean? Like, what was that transition like? And was it easy for you to be like, you know what, I don't have a job anymore, I'm just going to do this? Or was it kind of difficult for you? Yeah, it was, it definitely was difficult because ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to uh, create videos and things like that We've, mm -hmm. i've always had like a creative side to me i like creating like edits of like horror films and little these little like uh, horror edits and things oh, yeah. my brother my brother did it for a while as well oh cool and when we were kids we'd be like oh you know i want to be a youtuber one day you know mm -hmm. get that yeah. get that get that plaque yeah you know? i want that plaque so, so bad dude Ooh, i want that plaque. i was always like 
oh, I'd love to do YouTube as a full-time job one day. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to the point where I was like, right, I can literally call my work now and say, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I was like, it, I, I always thought back then I would feel completely different. I would be like on cloud nine. But when, when I was there making that call, nothing really changed. I still felt the same, like mm -hmm. the same hunger and like everything. And I was like, putting it off for a while. For some reason I was. Yeah. I think it's because I felt like I'm putting it, my whole world is going to be based on, it's my responsibility, it's yeah. not an employer. This is all on me now. Mm -hmm. And we both know, we were talking before, but we both know how inconsistent YouTube can be sometimes. Yeah. So I was thinking, if I quit my job and it's a good job, a week later, I get demonetized. I'm in serious trouble. Yeah, literally. No, you got. Yeah, you got to tread lightly, bro. You got to tread real yeah. lightly. It's like you can't be too crazy on YouTube. And and I, I respect it. I respect it. That's why I put content in other places. I put you know stuff on TikTok. I put stuff on Rumble. I put yeah. stuff on Instagram. Um, yeah. But now YouTube is where you can foster like a for real engaged community, which is why I double down on yeah. YouTube. Um, yeah. So you did that for a while. You quit your job. You're full time YouTuber now. So what is your, what, or how old are you? I forgot to ask, how old are you? 30. You're 30, okay, I'm 33. I'm about to be yeah. 34 this month. Okay, I figured you were a little bit older because like you don't gain usually wisdom in your 20s. It's a lot of trial and error. Like, you know, you mm. gotta figure it out first. Mm. Um, but so, so what other things are you trying to do outside of YouTube? Are you just recording content and recording videos or is there like a bigger vision for other things that you wanna do? Like meet and greets or my, uh, events yeah. or, yeah? Like, I see a few people were commenting about it, like a meet and greet. I just, I probably would do one if it was that, if people wanted one that much. Like, yeah. But I just don't see myself as one of those people, like yeah. someone queuing up to meet me. I, I, I don't feel like I'm worthy of, like, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not that special. I'm just a normal guy. Yeah. I make YouTube videos. I like to make people laugh and, you know, and that's it really. I don't feel like one of those people if that makes sense dude it, it, it makes total sense it's almost like an imposter syndrome like like to, we were talking about this before we got on but like you see all the people subscribing and watching and you're like i'm just you know how basic and normal you are and i kind of feel the same way like a lot yeah. of this stuff is i guess kind of a facade of saying like look at me look how professional it looks but like in the grand scheme of things like i'm just a normal dude and exactly, i've got a lot yeah. of life experiences and i'm just giving advice and being funny yeah. um yeah so no i feel you I, like i don't think I'm worthy of people. I don't, I don't feel that at all. And maybe it's, yeah. maybe it's the humble nature and it keeps us hungry because I feel like once you start getting entitled is once start, once like bad things start happening to you. I mean, look at Bevo, mm -hmm. like he went on the whatever podcast was super entitled, oh, was super like boisterous. And then like his entire career online just tanked. Like man, it can happen really quick. Crazy, yeah. Crazy, like crazy. to be on that oh, podcast is such a good stepping stone yeah. for like people. And he yeah. just botched it completely. But me he and was, you should go on that together. Me and you should go on the whatever podcast. I want to go so that. bad. I've been hitting him up. That's why I, in, that's why I interviewed Andrew Wilson. Um, and I'm going to just keep interviewing people and like just because I mean, a reaction reaction style content is good, but they want to see you interacting and interfacing with people. So this is kind of mm -hmm. like a testament to that. And then also I want to start. Did you ever watch Kevin Samuels? Did you ever watch his oh, content? Of course. Of course. Yeah, Love yeah. Kevin Samuels. Um, He's the OG. Oh, dude, 100 percent. I want to start getting women on and doing these types of calls with women and having them queued up and like going back and forth and helping women because that content goes absolutely viral and nobody's really stepped in. Everybody does it in like a podcast setting, but these one on ones are like, in my opinion, super important. I think that, yeah. that's where I want to. I just don't have a lot of female viewers. <laughs> Not, yeah. Women don't yeah, watch yeah, my channel, me bro. Both, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think 93% of my viewers are men. You know what I mean? Literally, so yeah. it's just like, yeah. but but men dominate YouTube. It's like a lot of guys watch YouTube. Women are yeah. more on TikTok and IG and stuff like that. Um, yeah, short form content. Oh um, yeah. I, I watch, you know, go to the gym a lot and I uh, watch, Sam, I think you say Sam Sulek or Sulek. Yeah, yeah, Sam Sulek, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I watch a lot of this stuff. It's like an hour long a video. I can easily get through that, Yeah. you know. So, oh, this stuff is good and it's just raw and yeah. real. I think, we're finally coming back to a time where people are going to binge longer videos that are just like mm. basic like this. Like we're just talking and I bet we yeah. can get people to watch maybe 20, 30 minutes of it, which would be awesome. I don't expect anybody to watch more than five minutes. At least sometimes I don't, if I don't get value out of it. But like, I think COVID brought back this binging longer episode community. Yeah. Whereas people used wanted like, I just want 20 minutes and done. I want 20 minutes and done. Yeah. Um, 
And I okay. think people like the genuine approach. Yeah. Like there's a lot of fakeness on YouTube. So much. These days. So much yeah. fakeness. So, so are you like, ever, I, I, are you going to try to ever incorporate your girl on your channel? Ever bring her on or? Oh, never. Never? never. My girl never, doesn't want to no, be on my wanna, channel either. <laughs> no, yeah, no, she, it's not that she wouldn't, but yeah. I just want to keep my, my relationship, my private life separate. Yeah. You know? I feel I like you to do. Keep everything separate. As soon as I, as soon as I upload a video, I go back to my normal life. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I reply to comments and then I, and then I come back tomorrow and do the same thing, go yeah. about my life. I, I like to keep it separate because I know you know how stressful YouTube can get sometimes. Dude, so, yeah, you know, And it's you'll be on your phone looking at stuff and you're like, man, you can't concentrate on anything. It really consumes you sometimes. No, it does. I, I checked that YouTube studio probably over a hundred times a day. It's insane. Looking at oh, comments, yeah. looking at analytics, how are we trending? How many views have we got? And stuff like that. Um, it's impressive that you reply to most of your comments. I was doing that a lot in the beginning, but then mm. I started getting so many, like three mm. to 400 a day, yeah. that it would take me three or four hours. And I'm like, bro, I need to record content. I, I got yeah, other things yeah, to do. Yeah. Like, how do, you, how do you balance that? Do you literally sit down every day, like the start of your day and just reply to comments for a few hours? Like, what do you, how do you get to most of them? Um, so when I upload a video, I, I tend to, the first hour, two hours, I tend to reply to all those comments. Okay, I do that too. And then, and then sort of when it gets a bit crazy from then on, because you get the combination of older videos as mm -hmm. well. But it, it could just be anything. I could just be sat there between games when I'm on my PlayStation, I'll just be scrolling through. Right. Liking, it's sort of like a, you know, like people are scrolling through TikTok all day. It's sort of me. That's me of YouTube Studio. Like, yeah. that's my, that's my <laughs> social TikTok, media yeah. scrolling is comments. Yeah, yeah. that but makes sense. I just wanted to answer your question about what another goal. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. I've got, it's, I know I keep bringing my brother up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, I've always, we've always wanted to do YouTube together. Mm -hmm. And even when I started this channel, I said at some point, you know, like especially when I quit my job, because yeah. that was the goal. Me, me and my brother can focus on a, a channel as well, which is what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a separate channel, similar to, to your setup, you know, two mics and we react to things and stuff. And yeah. that's going well. That's a big goal of mine as well, because I want him to, you know, quit his job right. and, and sort of live the life he wants as well. That's Preach that, brother. Yeah. As well. So well, good yeah, on you. Just, good on you for that. And then, um, yeah. Make sure to get me his details. I'll tag him in the description so um, people can go follow. I oh, appreciate it. I'll yeah, appreciate no, of course, it, of course. Because I saw that and I was like, bro, there's nothing better than putting your friends on, putting your family on. I'm 100% all about it. And I try to do that as well. It's just a lot of people don't understand how hard the grind is. Like they see the success and they're like, I can do YouTube. And you're like, can yeah. you post a video every day for six months and get 100 views on every video? Not even 100 yeah. views. Could you do that? A lot of people just yeah. get discouraged. Like, yeah, completely. I like it took me three years to get a hundred thousand uh, followers on Instagram, but I posted for nine hundred days straight. And when people yeah. are like nine hundred days, they're like, I haven't done mm. anything for nine hundred days. Like, I know it's really you have to be so consistent. That's why with my channel, I post every single day, and the video goes live every day at one p.m. Every day mm. at one p.m. So people know I'm just going to show up for. So for me, that's it's been the tough part is I have to get it done in the morning, and especially when I had a job. You got to wake up early, go to the gym, come home, record, then start your actual day, which is which is kind of tough. But it eventually got to that point. So with you and your brother, how long have you guys been doing this, this, I guess, duo channel, reaction channel? Not been long. It's literally been about a month. Uh, OK, we've, OK. We've probably made about between 10 and 15 channels in our life and yeah. trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. And we always wanted to find something because the most important thing about YouTube the number one thing is that you enjoy it. Yeah. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it. Simple Facts. as that. Yeah. You know, so we, we, we've done all sorts, gaming channels, vlogs, like, vlogs, all yeah. sorts. And this was the one that sort of stuck yeah. for us and it, it's going well. So it's a big, it's a big uh, goal of mine. But the, I think the main goal for me was, was, is the YouTube clap. Like that's a big, yeah, that's a big one for me. I want it so yeah. bad. Like, don't want yes, it so man, bad. It won't be long. It will fly by. But I'm literally about 2,000 subs away. And You're close, dude. You're like, in the next couple of weeks, probably, it's going to be shipped to mm. you. Like, yeah, it's, it's real. You're real crazy. close. I used to always think about holding it in person. Mm -hmm. And to, to other YouTubers, you know, like, 
it might not be a big deal, for, but for me, it's a childhood dream of mine. It really is. Oh, dude, it's a it huge really deal. It's a childhood dream. Well, for guys like me and you, I feel like I didn't start my channel piggybacking off someone else. It's literally mm. just my face. I make the thumbnails. I find the content. I've learned from the ground up what to do on YouTube. It hits a yeah. little bit different. Like, you didn't piggyback off somebody. And they're like, hey, go follow Sam. Like, that wasn't your journey. Your journey was I got it out the mud by myself. I started with zero. And see, yeah. that's where I'm like, because I, I want to put the plaque right there. Like I'm keeping that yeah, spot that, I was, open. I was about to say that spot right there. Yeah. Is, uh, I can just see a plaque there. That would look smart. See, that's that's what I want to do. Um, yeah. It'll happen, to, man. Not long. Yeah. Uh, like, dude, I, I hope so. But it's it's been a long journey. So, how do you find the content that you react to? I have my own kind of like what I do, but like, how do you find the videos that you that you react to? It's my YouTube algorithm is sort of. You know, I'll be on the home screen. Mm -hmm. I'll watch some stuff from Instagram shorts or just scrolling through. Most of the video ideas is I might come across something just when I'm going about my day and I think, oh, I'll do a video about that. Yeah. You know, or people send me things, people email me things. Even my missus will be like, Sam, what do you think of this? Maybe, you know, oh, okay, she'll, yeah. uh, give me some ideas. But mm -hmm. and sometimes I go off my most recent videos, ones that have maybe done better than others or I'll be like, oh, I haven't done a video about this sort of thing in a while. Maybe I should do another one of those. Right. And then maybe I'll search for that specific thing. Like back in the day, and I'm a very honest guy, I hold my hands up to it. When when I first started, I was so desperate. You know, I used to look at guys like Araco, Griffin Mind, and just be like, oh, I'm just going to copy what they do. Yeah. You know, and I, I did that, especially times of desperation, you know, like when I did a video and it get like 200 views, and then if I did one like Araco and these other guys, it might get 2,000. That was, you know, when you're desperate, that 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 was what I used to do sometimes, mm -hmm. especially in the early days. I think a lot of YouTube, there's a lot of YouTubers still do it. That's what, there's dude, I find videos that work and then I'm like, all right, mm -hmm. I'm going to make the thumbnail kind of my own, but, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to react to it. The original part is me, but like, yeah, I, I take things that work on YouTube because like, I'm not big enough yet where I can just react to anything. I still am like garnering a community, but yeah, I piggyback off of what's worked all the time. Oh, of course, yeah. And like me and Erica have spoke many times. Uh, Griffin Mind as well, I speak to him often. And, you know, Erica did message me about these things mm -hmm. and we spoke about it. And, you know, we're, we're I would like to say we're friends now. Yeah. So, but that that's part of the game, right? There's a lot of YouTubers now who have like, 10 times more subs to me and you know pretty much replicate my video yeah. and everything and I know that like some people are making thousands off you know literally my thumbnails and things like that but mm -hmm. it's just it's an unfortunate part of the game it's always going to happen right YouTube never going to be able to resolve it you know mm -hmm. So, so sorry to cut you off so do you find shorts and like YouTube shorts and compile them together and then react to them? Or do you find other videos that are doing well and then react to those? I, I mainly use TikTok. So I have, I okay. follow a bunch of accounts and then, you know, just on the For You page, following mm -hmm. page, just find a bunch of shorts that are sort of relevant to the topic. Yeah. Watch it, download it. And uh, I sort of just go by that. My structure is find a video topic first, mm -hmm. sort of, have a rough idea of what I'm going to do for the thumbnail once that's done and then all the other stuff is like additional videos to lead up to the eight ten minute mark right so just a combination of longer videos shorter videos memes just sort of a video where I, I always think like I could watch yeah, yeah. so you you, know, you, you do a lot of pre-research and finding the videos downloading them compiling them what yeah. do you edit on do you edit on like Adobe Premiere or which one? DaVinci Resolve. Oh, oh DaVinci Resolve. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what, yeah, your process is probably much more difficult than mine. I just literally find videos that are doing well, and then I download the... I, down, I usually either screenshot the actual video to make a thumbnail or download the thumbnail and, like, just try to emulate it and put my own text on it. Um, and then I always shout out at the beginning. Like, like for you, I tagged you, hey, I got a banger from Simp, Simp Saver Sam. And then in the t in the description, I put your video. Because um, mm -hmm. I was doing that a lot in the beginning. And people were like, hey, dude, like, you're not giving me any credit. And you're just reacting to my content. And I was like, you know well, what? That's credit that's... Is, is definitely a big deal. Like, yeah. 
I always put credit and I think it's really important for people to do it because it just I think a lot of people are fine with other people watching their videos but mm -hmm. just putting a, a simple link is just a, a thank you sort of thing oh, 100% I think, yeah if I found a guy I can't remember his name but he he steals a lot of my thumbnails never oh, gotten really? yeah yeah I, like I went to I yeah. just went to his page and I just was going through I was like these are a lot of my oh, thumbnails man. but he, yeah, I get yeah, no credit for uh, it yeah, yeah but it is Same what it here, is man. to me imitation is the highest form of flattery so the fact that he's even stealing it i'm like dude i'm cool with that like yeah he, th he must think it's good you know so i'm cool with that i i see some smaller youtubers you know and i see them download my thumbnail and use it and i often than not i don't really have a problem with it because i I'm not going to be a hypocrite and because yeah. I was in the same position and a lot of YouTubers don't admit it, but we've all done it at times, yeah. you know, especially when you've got a small channel, you try, you're just trying to get some views and mm -hmm. everything. And yeah, but there's a lot of big names who do it. Oh and dude, Osman Gold's a huge one. Like he may, he gets, mm. he'll take an original video and then like it gets a hundred thousand views. He'll repost, it gets a million. And then yeah. all he did is put his face on it like, but he's got such an engaged <laughs> yeah, yeah. community that yeah. his community will watch it and it's like and he doesn't give credit a lot of times sometimes he does sometimes he doesn't but like i see his content and i try to react to some of the content he reacted to and it flopped and i was like why is it not working and i was like oh he's a twitch streamer his community is like anything he does they're like biting on it and i'm like i don't have mm -hmm. that i have to talk about mm -hmm. topics that people want to see so do you see more do you think your community likes more of the woke stuff that you react to or like the relationship stuff or do you think it's a mix? I see a lot of woke stuff on your channel, which is why I ask. Yeah, I think like I said earlier about the woke video that took off, mm -hmm. I did probably about 30 episodes after that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was... Uh, I was you gotta double down though, wave. dude. It's smart. Yeah. Yeah. So I did a bunch of videos and maybe like a, a woke woman kicking off or woke guy kicking off, anything where I could you know, do woke stuff because it was obviously what people liked yeah. at the time. I do think literally the last week or two, the woke stuff has really died down. Mm -hmm. um, there seems to be loads of these, I see hundreds of AI Dude. woke videos, like these fake colorful <sighs> That's insane. thumbnails of no, nothing's happening. Yeah. And it, it seems to really kill down the woke algorithm. Mm -hmm. For me so i've seen those a ton it's like the purple haired yeah, or like the rainbow yeah. haired and it's like a fake fight but like it yeah, gets yeah, clicks yeah. It, it's crazy it's to crazy. me crazy there's thousands of them but mm -hmm. i am um, i was thinking that for a while but the, like my, my most popular video is about a guy in a gym who says he's going to smack someone for walking past his camera I was quite surprised that video did well. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of weird. Like, on my most popular videos, it seems to be a combination of all sorts. Mm -hmm. It's not like one singular topic. Obviously, the delus delusional woke videos did really well. Right. So I'm kind of happy that in my like top five, it's not all the, the exact same video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's like even my recent ones. Um, I, I do tend to get a lot of views on like the the boxing ones which is quite surprising because of my boxing background and whatnot people yeah. seem to like it which was really surprising really mm -hmm. really surprising because i thought i was so niched into dating and uh you know had to be that sort of content relationships but when i started doing what i wanted what i wanted to do it, it kind of paid off yeah so, like the delusion cannot defeat biology type things where like girls are talking smack and guys are fight like stuff like that or just yeah. like boxing in general um a lot of these like want to be tough guy videos the fake tough guy videos oh like okay fake those. tough guys okay gotcha instant um, karma stuff like that yeah those okay. sorts of ones but it's not really a compilation it's more of a singular event that's happening in the video right you know there's a lot of these instant karma uh for 20 minutes sort of videos mm -hmm. mine's more of a there's a title and a thumbnail that tells a story. I like to sort of have a story for the video, if that makes sense. That makes total sense. Let's let's dig into so, that. So how do you go about making thumbnails and titles? Like, what's your process? Um, so on DaVinci, obviously, you have the video. And then because, you know, the TikTok, most of them are, you know. Vertical. In the middle, aren't they? And they've got the, the black screen. Yeah. So I normally take two of those, put them together of the most eventful things happening in the video. Okay. Make the thumbnail, and if I can look at the thumbnail and be like, oh, I understand what's happening, 
or what's about to happen, mm -hmm. that's pretty good for me. Yeah. And then back to what we said earlier about people downloading your thumbnails. People used to do it a lot more when you've got no text on there because obviously they would just add their own arrow or, yeah. you know, whereas now I add quite a lot of writing. People can't, it, it's too much. It's, yeah. it's too similar to mine. So I add a lot of text now because it, it just helps amplify the, the story of the thumbnail, if that makes sense. I agree. I add text then, on every single thumbnail, every single yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Your thumbnails are, are really good. But Appreciate that. The, the titles are pretty self-explanatory. I mean... They're pretty simple, straight to the point. Yeah. Really. So. Yeah, I try to keep really, mine short. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's not many ways you can sort of title a guy walking past a camera and someone says he's going to smack him, you know? Yeah, like, it's, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty simple. So I've mm -hmm. always just had the same sort of structure with, with titles and whatnot. No, that makes sense. So you, have you always made all of your own thumbnails and everything like so do yeah, you make the I'll thumbnails in DaVinci as well, or do you use something like Canva or Photoshop? Canva. 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 That's what I use. Shout out to Canva. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah, Canva. Man. And there's a there's another website you should use. It's called Photor. F O T O R. It is a godsend mm -hmm. of an of a website. So it can it can take a blurry image, which we have to deal with a lot. So much. And it can it can like amplify it. Mm -hmm. It can use AI to make it look crisper. Mm, okay. It can rend render faces better and say there's like um, something in the photo you don't like, like like my bike there, for example. Right. You can mad AI remove it, and it will look like it was never there. Right. That's dope. So that was a that was a deal breaker for me. That website. Yeah. There's a lot so of crap in the use, background and blurry faces yeah. that yeah we deal with. Do you do you pay for Canva or do you use free version? Yeah. Uh, no, not for Canva. Okay. No, for, so when for you photos, okay, gotcha. Fun. So when you pay for Canva, there's two things that you mentioned, uh, like upscaling the image. They have an upscale image thing. I pay for. Oh, it's really? Like, yeah, it's like a twelve. It's like twelve bucks a month. But yeah, upscale image, and then the other one is a magic eraser. So you can literally just like go over it, and it'll erase it completely. But I use those oh, okay. all the freaking time because yeah. these yeah, crappy phone videos, dude. You have to yeah. upscale the image and then turn the clarity up and like turn up the brightness. Like yeah, I do yeah. all that. But yeah. I don't know why, but every every video is like recorded on a potato these days yeah <laughs> like they're never clear or anything i don't know what no, people are videoing on yeah what, what kind of gear do you use what do you use obs or do you use what do you stream yard obs obs okay okay uh, i use a sure a sure mic is pretty a uh, pretty big investment that mic to be honest probably was it sure sm58 uh smb Oh, SM7 B. Oh, those are like, the, like 250 a pop. Yeah. Those are really nice. I yeah. use a what? What is that? What is that? Where the hell is it? Is that a Shure mic as yeah, well? Yeah, this is a Shure SM58. Yeah, this one. Yeah, I mean Shure. Yeah, great. you can't go wrong with Shure. And then Mogami cables and an interface. What kind of camera do you use? Uh, it's an Algato Pro face cam. Really? Cam. Okay, so you're actually using yeah. a webcam. It's really crispy, yeah. actually. It's really yeah, crispy. It's, I use my a, phone. <laughs> oh really yeah this is the yeah. iphone 15 right here <laughs> yeah so you can plug up in obs you can download an obs app on your phone and then you just pl um, literally plug it in and then mount it yeah so I, i've done all my videos on on my computer so it's just a usb back of the computer yeah mics a usb and that's pretty much it i don't have anything too fancy like it got arico for example he does all his on his phone really still yeah He's he huge does all too. his on his phone and he just uses these with the mic yeah and he'll be sat in his garden doing it we were talking about it and i was like that is crazy he does all his thumbnails on his phone I need thumbnails to see on his phone he does everything on his phone that's Never crazy that's nuts i i like being behind a computer and like it's be so hard to do it on a phone oh yeah i don't know how he does it that's crazy because he he's it. big like you'd figured he would have like a pc set up or something like that yeah man he's killing it man he's got you know what half a million i've always given yeah i've always given credit to him he deserves a lot of credit because he opened the doors for a, a lot of people mm -hmm. you know well, he I know walked so we could run it. straight up yeah yeah definitely. he deserves a lot of credit man he's been on youtube for a long time from what mm. i've from at least from what i've seen i've watched a lot of his content um yeah that's crazy well dude it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you i really do appreciate it yeah. do you have any um do you have anything that you want to drop on the community before we we part ways um I just 
want to just I just appreciate everything. I know I can't I can't say it enough, especially nearing a hundred thousand. Never would have thought this would have happened. Mm -hmm. It's I just can't thank everyone enough. That that's pretty much it. Just can't can't be any more thankful than I already am. It's it's so, a it's a blessing, man. Whoever would yeah. have thought, like you know, two years ago, you would have said, "Hey, you're exactly. two thousand away from a hundred k." It's crazy to think, bro. Yeah, and the support that the mm -hmm. people who, you know, I recognize the names and the same people mm -hmm. that, you know, it's a, it's crazy, man. It really is. I'm still sort of, it still hasn't really sunk in, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know if it ever but, will. You're just gonna keep growing right. and keep going, man. That's all you can do, but. It's really yeah. cool to see that your channel's grown. I've been watching you for a few months. When I at least when I started, you've had a ton of growth. And congrats on the new house. Congrats on the relationship. I so it. I it, I'm proud of you for being able to quit your job and get away from the nine mm. to five and just do YouTube full time. But uh, your content's great. You're hilarious. You're a good dude. Um, and I'm really glad I that you came it. in to do this interview, man. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep yeah, up. We'll keep up, man. And and when you hit 100k, maybe we'll do another little interview and and maybe you do like a little celebration stream or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so definitely. That'd be when you get 100k, <laughs> we we'll both go on the whatever podcast <laughs> that's a bet that's with a our, bet with our plaques in one hand i'll wear it on a shirt i'll get it framed shadow box on a shirt on a, on a pendant and chain <laughs> yeah. Yeah, drill a hole in it type shit yeah yeah <laughs> that'd be dope well cool man yeah. um well it's been an absolute pleasure man we'll keep in touch appreciate it thank you